Hello again everybody, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do an oil painting and it's a scene from a really an area in uh, Canada <clears throat> called Ross Moore Lake and uh, I got the photo from our Photos for Artists Facebook page from a, art a photographer named Tricia, Tricia Rawson and uh, it's a photo of a old cabin. We call them cabins. She called it a camping hunt, hut, camping hut, and uh, so I'll call it a camping hut for the name of this uh, painting we're going to do, but it's uh, from this area in Canada, and uh, it's a really pretty area, and it's kind of hard to get to from what I can understand. Um, I was able to uh, contact uh, one of the uh, people who live up there, actually another uh, hiker named Jeremy Markle, uh, by just googling Ross Moore lake in Canada and uh, saw some, some beautiful photos out there. He also had a uh, uh, has a blog where he posts hiking trips, camping trips and that sort of thing and he he posted a, a experience of hiking up to this cabin back in 2015 I believe it was um, when the temperature was like 20 below zero or something and they were snowshoeing it up there so uh, it's kind of interesting to meet him. He's going to also agree to send me some more photographs. They do a lot of hiking and camping in that area, so I may get some more photos from some beautiful areas with mountains and lakes. Um, but we're going to do this cabin today. We're going to use mostly the Bob Ross technique, although <clears throat> I will not be covering the whole canvas with liquid white like I normally do. I'm going to just use it white and we'll put liquid white where I need it. So uh, let me go over to my computer. I want to show you a couple things I did on the uh, computer with Photoshop and I'll be right back here to uh, start the painting. Hold on. Okay, here I am at my computer and uh, I want to be able to show you uh, what I did with the original photo. Here's the uh, original photo and uh, I held on to this for quite a while. I wasn't sure I was going to paint it. It looked like it was a lot of detail and kind of maybe hard to paint, but uh, I uh, I made a value map out of it, and as I normally do, uh, most times anyway. So it had a pretty interesting composition, had some interesting darks and mid-tones and lights that I thought I could uh, make a good photo out of, but still had a lot of detail in this painting, a lot of wood and, and uh, rough wood and that sort of thing. So <clears throat> one of the uh, techniques I tried was to use Photoshop, and there's a... Uh, tool in Photoshop. It's uh, when you go to the image you can uh, put artistic effects on the image and so there's an uh, artistic effect called cut out and what it does it takes the image and sort of zooms in on shapes. It finds shapes that are similar uh, in hue and similar in uh, value and it puts them together in these little blocks. So what I have here is a uh, I call it a cut out. Basically it's the same uh, image of the photo, but it's a lot more abstract, has a lot more uh, interesting shapes in it that you don't have to try to figure out by painting from the original photo. So I'm using that as one of my guides today. And uh, it's pretty easy to do if you use Photoshop, but there are other tools. You can use GIMP and uh, some other types of uh, image implement, uh, image uh, manipulation programs that you can get that will do a similar thing. It, it they take uh, analyze the pixels in the image and come up with these interesting shapes. So it uh, gives you a little bit of an abstract um, photograph to work from. So there's the uh, grid and uh, it's my 5x4 so we're painting on 11 by 14 canvas again today. And uh, also then I have the sketch uh, there and it's available for you if you want to go out to my website and pick it up. There are links down below uh, this particular uh, video you're watching and uh, you can get that sketch and uh, use it for your painting experience. Um, okay, so I want to go back over to the easel now and I'll go take you through the paints and uh, I want to show you something else I did with acrylics which I've been experimenting with acrylics lately and uh, I'll uh, talk to you about that in just a second. Hold on. <coughs> oh, gee. Almost fell down there. Okay, <laughs> okay, I tripped over my chair. Sorry for the clunky noise. Um, okay, so you see at the top of my easel here, I have the original photo here um, and uh, in all its detail. And then I have my 
cutout image, my artistic image that I made with uh, Photoshop, and then I have over here my value map, which I usually have at least two up there. Uh, and what you saw on my top of where my uh, palette is, you saw the uh, liquid white. This is a Bob Ross liquid white, and I have a little bit of liquid from Windsor Newton. Uh, liquid white makes the paint dry slower, and liquid makes the paint dry faster. I don't know if I'll use either one of those or very much of either one. I'm certainly not going to cover the canvas today. But um, I have been experimenting with acrylics, and so I've uh, taken an acrylic uh, workshop with an artist here, a local artist in Lakeland. And uh, so I've done this painting on, uh, this is a hardboard, um, and it's gray gessoed hardboard. And uh, so I just did it in a 10 by 10, or I'm sorry, 8 by 10 format. And uh, I tried to imitate these shapes and these things that I see in this cutout image. And it w worked very well. The paints that I have are nicely designed for some of these overlays and they have transparency to them so you can see through them. So I've played around with that and I uh, may use that again sometime in the future, but I thought I would show you that and share with you that, uh, that particular version of this painting. Um, let me uncover now my paints and uh, I'll go through the paints with you and uh, I'll go through the brushes and get this out of the way here. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to have a little bit of a uh, reduced palette today. Um, I've got my titanium white here, as usual. I'm using Midnight Black, Van Dyke Brown, Dark Sienna, Sap Green, and Yellow Ochre. And I put a little uh, Ultramarine Violet on here from Grumbacher. So um, if I need some blues, I'm going to try to get it out of my black. If I need some reddish color, I'm going to try to get it out of the Dark Sienna. And I've got Yellow Ochre here for my yellow. So I will be able to use those Again, with a limited palette, it will be kind of fun to try to, uh, to do that uh, today. So my brushes, uh, my usual Bob Ross brushes, I have the, the one-inch blender. I have this uh, half-size round. I have my fan brush, a couple of sizes. I have a couple of flat, uh, I have a, a filbert here and a flat. And I have my uh, rigger, script liner rigger. It's used, that term is used interchangeably. Uh, it's just a small, narrow uh, br bristles long and I have my painting knife which I may or may not use all right there we go that's the brushes that's the paints um, you know everything I know so let's see if I can get this uh, zoomed in here and get going get in just a little further make sure you've got room to see the everything pretty well okay um, I noticed when I was looking at this this morning I had sort of missed a couple of uh, <clears throat> these beams that stick out over here. You see, I, I went over them with pencil a little bit. I had kind of missed those beams that stick out. Those are holding the roof up. So in architectural accuracy, I guess, that's uh, I wanted to put those in there. All right. I um, think that's all I want to say now. And I want to make sure you can see this pretty well. Okay, there we go. Um, so what are we going to start with? Well, I'm going to start with the... Uh, the background, back back to front, and uh, hello, Lindy. Glad you're with me from South Africa. Welcome. It's uh, late there, 7 p.m. or something, 8 o'clock at night. I don't know. Um, okay, so we're going to start with the background. It's, I'm going to put a little bit of uh, my uh, liquid white together with my titanium white and just a touch of black to uh, get myself a sort of a light gray background for this. It's just sort of really was no... Uh, um, significant blue or colors in the sky in this particular photo. And again, I don't have to match the photo necessarily, but I uh, want to try to uh, at least um, get a good um, representation of what the photo looks like. And uh, so I'm just going to put in now some of my lights here and they're sort of grayed down, just slightly grayed down. And uh, I'm just kind of painting in behind where these trees are going to go. A um, couple shades of gray, um, yeah, something like that. Um, I'm using a, this Bob Ross Filbert brush. Um, I'll make sure I get in here and cover as much as these, uh, where I want these tree uh, leaves and stuff to overlap. So I'm trying to make sure I overlap that, change the value a little bit. 
uh, put in some it's just titanium white with just a touch of midnight black in it uh, put a little bit of liquid white in to get the uh, paint to flow just a little smoother um, as you know if we've covered this uh, canvas with liquid white um, any sketch or anything I have on here would be uh, gone and uh, so I like to work with some amount of a sketch here to uh, see where I'm going as much as possible and uh, put a few things in there. I'm just filling in now this sky in the background uh, the sketch helps me see where to put the the background, the sky, it's just a grayish a little bit of gray back there white and gray mixing it up um, a little more tone in it over here could be a cloudy day, I don't know uh, if you uh, as I mentioned before, if you Google uh, Ross Moore, R-O-S-S-M-O-O-R-E, Ross Moore Lake, Canada, you will find uh, several links to this area, and uh, it's, I guess it's a fairly well-known uh, area to hike to or to camp to, and this particular cabin uh, is one that um, these hikers, this particularly uh, Jeremy Mark Markle and uh, a friend of his, uh, had actually hiked to this area in the middle of the winter and uh, <clears throat> were able to use this cabin for uh, stop and cook lunch and uh, have a little break before they started back. Um, but it uh, the hike sounds like it's fairly rigorous, and uh, if you're not uh, Particularly in the winter time when, when they went, it was, uh, I think he said it was like 14 below zero or something when they started to come back uh, from the hike. So uh, <laughs> it's not for the faint of heart if you're uh, in this area. So uh, hopefully I'll pick up a few more nice photos from Jeremy and uh, I'll be able to reference his blog and uh, show you some other nice paintings that we can get out of these, the scenery up there in this part of Canada. Uh, it's near British Columbia and Alberta area uh, where most of these uh, images are or will come from and uh, so uh, I'm going to put in some white in here. There's a section on this roof that's uh, kind of light. I think it's a tin roof from what I could tell uh, and uh, Okay. All right. Anybody have any questions since we're live here <clears throat> today? Uh, just type them in the uh, window if you want to chat. Um, be glad to uh, talk to you and uh, see if I got any answers for any of your questions. I think this is probably about all I want to do for that sky. Um, not much. Maybe just a little bit of a a little bit of something. This is a big area up here with nothing going on. So I'd like to have some kind of abstract shape in there that sort of indicates some clouds or something so it's not just white paint, right? You don't like to... Uh, one of the artists I follow uh, who teaches oil painting is uh, uh, has this theory on uh, I don't know if it's his theory alone, but certainly it's um, one that a lot of professional artists know, is that you don't leave a section of your painting that's the size of two inch square with nothing going on. You've got to put something in there. Put a change of value, a change of color, some object, do something, but to uh, keep it uh, alive so it's not looking like just a dead space. All right, so we got that sky done. I'm going to uh, clean out my brush, and uh, I'm going to come back now and start putting in some of that darker background. Put in some of those trees in the background. <clears throat> we'll see if we can get get that going. Um, 
I think I'm going to probably use my uh, small fan brush here. And I've got my green, so I've got, since I have my sap green, I've got uh, sap green and my ochre will give me different shades of green. I can get lighten it up a little bit, use the sap green in its normal uh, value. I want to lighten it up, I can put in some of the uh, ochre. If I want to darken it down, I can add some, uh, some of my midnight black and uh, midnight black with the green will give me a darker green. If you can see here on my palette, I already have three values of green, a dark, dark, mid value, and light. If you have three values of any color, you can make it look three-dimensional. So um, that's what I'm going to try to do here. I'm going to see if I can put in a few of these uh, dark, darker trees over here. Just put in some We've got some uh, trees here. Okay, so if I want the real darkest dark, I put in the, the black and uh, just put in, use my fan brush the way Bob Ross always used it. And uh, when I get that real dark in there, then I can come back and put in some other values, lighter values. Go along this edge of this roof here. I want to outline this roof a little bit better so you can at least see that. Midnight black, sap green. Midnight black, sap green. Um, and then there's, uh, we got a big tree right in here. There's another way to put these um, branches in if you don't want to use this fan brush. Um, you can use something like the, uh, the filbert and by using the back of it or using it in a, uh, I, I paint uh, pine trees like this a lot, uh, but you can put in this little uh, just Use the back of it and let it pull off the paint and you can get these interesting shapes that don't look totally like the old Z trees that you would get when you use the fan brush. Uh, it changes the, the type of tree you get a little bit because um, it doesn't have the same sort of swooping thing on the end of it like you have with uh, the fan brush. So you can just sort of feather these in uh, and uh, give you some nice tree looking shapes. Okay, um, I see some white sticking through here in some areas. I'm going to kind of block that out a little bit so we don't have a bunch of extraneous whites up there sticking up. Um, um, and I think, now that I think about it, um, I'm going to put in a few um, trees in the background here. I'm going to get this gray going again with my black and white. And in this area here, I'm going to, some of these little, little trees that are sitting back here that look like they're further away. So I'm going to just sort of put something else in here to look like we've got some trees off in the distance. Um, it's going to help add depth and um, hardly see them, but when I fill in this space here, you'll see there's uh, some nice looking things going on back there in the distance. So I just added a lot of depth to this painting by just putting in a few of those. I might put I don't know if I want to put some on the other side or not, maybe too much over there. Um, put in a couple, maybe just put in something back in here that looks like we got some other trees going on in the distance. Fill in some of this white space. Just picked up some green, which I didn't mean to pick up. So I'm just using black and white to get a 
sort of a nice gray tone back here and just put in a few things that look like we got some something going on in the distance back there Make these put a different couple different heights a couple more here and then we're going to come back to the green again as we move forward okay so that's good three trees right there that's pretty good and we'll all right get that going let's come back now with our dark sap green this tree in here we need to have a lot of put in a little bit of a trunk there I'm gonna go back to my fan brush again pick it up and uh, it's so easy to make these trees with this fan brush it's just a shame to not use it so I'm not exactly copying the photograph right I'm just sort of making it representative of the photograph uh, darker some areas here we've got some dark there's some dark um, bushes hanging down up here so they come out like this All right, pick up a little lighter color maybe, put some uh, ochre in this a little bit, change the color up a little bit, add some other values, colors in here. Let's put in some, I'm leaving room in there for a tree trunk uh, that goes behind here. On this left side, all along here, this is all pretty dark. I'm going to leave some holes in it so that it's not all the same and all the same look. So this has to go sort of outline this tree along there. There's a tree sitting there. And uh, so I'm just using a lot of Sap green, midnight black, a little bit of yellow ochre here and there. These are all right up next to that tree, so I'm going to make sure that's filled in there. It's filled in over here. I can leave some light in there, but I want that next to that tree to be very dark like this just come down there like this thank you Lindy it is a beautiful cabin it was really a surprise when I googled that name of that lake and all of a sudden I saw pictures of this cabin in the snow and uh, this one that was presented on uh, photos for artists uh, by Tricia Rawson was uh, in the summertime, springtime, I guess. Uh, so uh, she didn't hike up there like these guys did in the middle of the winter. All right, I'm getting a lot of uh, stuff going on here now. This is uh, just filling it in. I'm gonna come back on top and put a few more lighter. Uh, See, I want this to come down to about right in here. Okay, about like that. There we go. Okay, so I've got a really nice dark edge there that's going to keep your eye from going out of the painting. Uh, I've got some nice darks over here. There's a few more lighter colors. I'm going to pick up a little white. See if I can lighten this green up a little bit. Put a little ochre in it. 
change the color up a little bit, start adding some um, other values and colors back in here so it looks like we have more than just a big black rectangle back there. I don't want it to be a black rectangle. Over here we're going to do the same thing. Whatever color I have on the left side of this tree, I'm going to try to make it come out on the right side as well. So it's always a good technique. You um, have to remember to do that. Okay, so we got trees here. I'm just leaving abstract shapes. I'm not trying to paint every tree limb that's in the place. I'm trying to uh, see the top of this roof it's right there. Again, I'm going to try to make it as straight as possible and leave some okay so we have our some more dark in here making pretty good progress here on this part of it um, yeah so I just put in a few more vertical strokes, uh, vertical brush strokes there. So it looks like we've got a few things going on. Okay. All right. So now I got that uh, um, that tree that's there. I want to make him nice gray. Um, I think I'm going to See how this goes here. I'm using this rigger, but I don't think I want to keep using this rigger. I'm going to get a. I do have some smaller brushes here. I have some smaller flats that uh, from my Trakel set, Trakel brushes, and it would make a lot better use of this pull down like this and make this tree I want it to be lighter it's got to be it's really a lot lighter than the uh, surrounding area so I want it to be a nice gray with some black dark darker uh, areas in it so I'm just going to pull him down like this hopefully that's not going to be uh, make too much of a mess in this brush I have to once I get that paint in this brush, I have to go back and take it out. Rub it out, pick up some more. Okay. Picking up some of that green. I get it's not too bad. Um, but let's put this in there like that. I can come back and always put some more white over the top of it if I need it. Um, that's why I'm throwing in some darker abstract shapes here to kind of indicate marks in that tree. As I come down here, I'm going to just, again, I'm not trying to paint everything I see in that tree. I'm just trying to give you the impression of a sort of a rough tree surface. Down here, a little bit of dark on this side, maybe. Okay, and that tree is not perfectly straight, which is the way I want it. I want it to be slightly uh, wobbly, if you will. We'll go up here and find these part up here where I had this sort of shadow on this roof here. Well, I 
put in some some of my sky back there. <clears throat> okay, now how are we doing? I got oh, there's a section right here that's really white. I'll lighten that up right in there. Along here, it's um. It is the tin roof, that uh, painting up there. So let's just put it in, pull it down, some white. I may come, have to come back and uh, hit that again to lighten it up a little bit as we get on with this painting, but I think that'll at least give me the light that I want right now. Okay, so I think I've got pretty much my these trees done. There's a few areas I could probably put in a few more. Uh, oh, my the big tree that goes right in here, I left him out. Aha! Good thing I didn't stop with that brush yet. Alright, so I've got this other gray tree now that's Right in here, this is really what I got this brush for. It's the right width. It just matches that right there. Um, give me some more gray. And come in here and put in the... It has to be darker than the background. Otherwise, you won't know what it is. It's going to blend in and uh, look just like the background, the sky. So I have to make it darker. Okay. So it kind of looks like a looks like a foggy day or something back here. Um, put in some whites to kind of fill that back in. There's actually another little tree peeking up in there. I don't know if I'll put that in. That may be too busy. So I'm going to make this top a little darker here. So you definitely see that's a tree there. Okay. Too dark. Okay. Um, well, I got my uh, rigger going here. I may just throw in a few more uh, some lines in here to show you that I've got some other things going on. Very light back there. Maybe put a couple of things in here like that. It's hard for you to see that, I'm pretty sure, but it does show there's some other. This is a Part of the woods over here on the left side, so we don't have uh, nothing holding these branches up that are over there. Okay, so then there's you know, a little bit of a on this tree. There's some marks that I want to throw in a few darker marks here and there. Remember, I said I want to get three values. I've got light value, mid value, and a dark value now. Okay. That's good for that. All right, now we got this area over here. We're going to start working on this cabin. I think I'm going to go from left to right, pretty much. And we're going to start getting in some of our grays. I think I'm going to get this brush cleaned out. <coughs> and I uh, might as well get my... F well, I got some more tree work to do. A lot more tree work to do over here, don't I? Since so cleaning this fan brush out, I got some all the work to do over here. So I'm just, uh, might as well just go ahead and continue to work on these over here. Put some more values in, get them a little bit too light maybe. Let's 
This whole area here is kind of dark with some trees going on. Um, another dark area coming down like this. <laughs> uh, get me some browns in here, start throwing in some other colors. This is really the darker area when I look at my value map, my uh, darkest area is over here on this right area. I'm going to throw this dark in and I'm going to come back and put some lights over it. <coughs> Tree trunks and that sort of stuff. Pick up some more green. Green and browns. Let's see, we got in here. I'm going to put in some. There's a tree in here. A couple of trees in there, actually. So I'm painting around the tree again, my uh, negative experience with watercolor keeps coming out in these oil paintings. I should just go in and throw the whole thing in there and make it all really dark, but I'm going to feather it down here like this. So, fairly Another thing going on over here with some So I want to hook those together. I don't want them to look like it's a ladder, right? I don't want it to look too spindly or too skimpy. I want these to be good solid branches because they're, they really are. If I hook them together like this, all of a sudden you don't see quite as much of a ladder effect. I want it to be a ladder to look like it's nice abstract shapes. Just fan brush work, folks. Just using this fan brush for all it's worth. And I uh, take it all the way down to in this area here. Okay. <clears throat> so I can come back and now put the trees back over that. I want to make sure this canvas is all covered in here nicely. And uh, with either my greens or my blacks. There's another area of uh, inside here that I want to get covered up, and I've got. To, I'm going to use a smaller brush for that, just so I can sort of make sure I do it right. Like right in here, there's a section green grass background right in there. And similarly below in this below this little beam right here, triangular area, and below it even more. All right, so I have a couple different values of green there. Um, pick up a few more and bring those out here. So I have, have that lighter green out here. There's a, there's a tree sitting here that's uh, a lighter color. If you can see that, but.
put in there. Okay, that's good. Okay, so now let's get into this cabin. We're going to have a lot of browns and <clears throat> and uh, yeah, all kinds of browns. I think it's time to put my fan brush up for a while. <clears throat> I may use it down here in the, the grassy area maybe later, but I can only just kind of finish this off down here in this area. All right, let's put in a few lighter trees, lighter colors, lighter values. So it's not all black. I don't want it to be all black. Okay. So I've got a bunch of abstract shapes sitting here. Okay. All right. Now, next step is this cabin. So I'm going to use, I think, this. I don't know if these, this brush is a little bit too wide. I've got some of these smaller brushes here from Trakel, which really lends itself to drawing these nice beams. There's a good one right there. So uh, I'm going to keep that brush handy and uh, pick up a little bit bigger flat and start working on my uh, my, my browns here. <clears throat> I've got my dark sienna and my Van Dyke brown and I've got my yellow ochre that I can add to that to get a different color of brown and I can add some white and get even another color so these are some of the colors I want to use in that cabin uh, and I'm probably going to use a ochre that's been lightened up with some white to uh, get the lighter sort of the yellowish color that uh, you see in some of those some of that wood okay let's start up here and see what we got uh, we're we going to start here Okay, I think I need a little more liquid white in here to sort of smooth things along a little bit. This is sort of so one thing the liquid white does for you, it lets you have a nice paint really moves well on the canvas when you're using it. <clears throat> Don't want to get any of these beams. That's the uh, big challenge here is to try to keep this from getting away from us. Right here. So this is sort of the base color here I'm putting in. We'll come back and put some highlights and lights and darks over it. Okay. I can see what this will do here. I get a nice gray, sort of a grayish brown out of that. And here I want some of that. grayish brown color darken it up a little bit even so these boards are laying like this so if we want to uh, represent them by brush strokes you have to make sure the brush strokes are going the way those boards lie lie otherwise you'll be causing the viewer some uh, confusion. Put a little bit of this up here so I make it connect. Okay, there's that. Um, so I got that. I got that gray, grayish color over here somewhere along this 
slide. Okay. All right. Well, I had that in my brush. I figured I might as well do that. Back to my dark sienna. <clears throat> Let's come up here and sort of get some more of this color in. I'm leaving enough of these other beams in there so I can see where they are, just so I don't end up with totally miss representing the architecture of this thing. I think I, not having any red has uh, affected my coloring here a little bit. ochre with some white in it with a little bit of uh, dark sienna seems to work to lighten it up. So it is lighter here and I can come back and put some dark over it if I want. Which I probably will. Let's see, make sure I cover this area here, up above, go back and pick up some of these other colors and come back here. <laughs> Looks like you're seeing an erector set or something here with all the beams sticking out, unpainted. All right, so it's uh, coming along. All the way out here, this goes out here like that and down. Pick up a few different colors. And This is the front. You got so many angles and uh, posts here, it's kind of hard to keep track of where you are. You got to make sure you know where you're painting the front of the cabin or the roof of the cabin or the underneath part of the roof. Okay, that looks pretty decent. Now, these other areas over here, let's see, start getting a little more gray in them. Along here, it's too much gray probably, but uh, let's put it in and see. Actually, what we have here is, um, these are the logs that are laying crisscross. One log lays this way, and the other one lies the other way. And uh, so we have to try to represent that a little bit. I'm not trying to paint those logs the way they actually lie. I'm going to sort of just make a corner here and uh, let it be abstract. Like this. Okay, that comes down here across. A lot of rectangular stuff going on here.
So I'm using a, a number eight Trakel flat brush for most of this. The flat helps me handle this uh, these these rectangular shapes. You can get a decent edge on it and uh, a regular filbert bristle or something would not uh, couldn't paint these rectangular shapes like this. You wouldn't have a wouldn't have a nice nice pointed edge that you need to do that with. Okay, so we're getting down here toward the bottom. Okay. And let's go back now and pick up our <clears throat> dark sienna. Let's bring it down here and sort of fill in a lot of this along this post to the deck. Um, one thing I want to make sure I do here is make sure the side that's out of the light is darker than the side that's in the light. And I th There's not a real lot of light on this photograph, actually. Um, but I want to make that corner pretty obvious right here. And uh, <clears throat> there's a name for that when you do that. This corner, probably told you guys before, when you paint a corner like this, the part that goes out of the light, actual scientific, <clears throat> artistic name for that's the change plane accent. Right here, that corner as it goes out of the light. And you sort of feather it and let it get a little lighter <clears throat> as it goes away from the corner. And uh, you'll run across that in architectural buildings Anything, well, not just architectural buildings, but uh, anything that uh, has a change of plane. That tells you this is a, a corner. I'm reading some of your comments here, Lindy. <laughs> uh, yeah, the dark, the dark trees, that's what makes things pop out. That's the... Uh, that's the trick in a, in a lot of these, is if you put a nice dark ground behind something, it just pops right out of the canvas, or right off the paper if you're painting watercolors. Um, so we got a few uh, log cabinet, log logs here that are sort of laying like this. I'm just gonna put those in, I'm just sort of I don't even know if you can see that. Um, so I can see it, but it's probably not dark enough for the camera to pick up um, right here. These are logs that are laying uh, same angle. Okay, and the uh, the view of this also, Lindy, because it was down on the ground and you're looking up, it also makes it more dramatic. Uh, makes it. Uh, a lot more interesting, I think. So this is the top of this beam that goes all the way across here, like that. Um, and we got some So I'm starting to put a little a few fine-tuning things in there. This is a minimal palette again, folks. Remember, I have no, no blues, no alizarin crimson, no red. My yellow is yellow ochre, sap green, and a couple of browns, and that's it. Um, so it's, ooh, that's a dark, dark, dark. Okay, let's see what, color my painting. I guess I got to go back and pick up my in here. Yeah, this is side of the door. Want that to be lighter. Redder. Lighter and redder. So the only red I'm able to pick up is out of my uh, um, 
tak sněna. Okay, there we go. Look at that here. There. Same color below this beam. If I can get the same color. I'm mixing up a lot of my colors here, so I've got a variety <coughs> of uh, browns and yellows and whites and I'm painting around the window here. Now there's a window that I got to paint around and uh, so I want to keep that in mind. More yellow. There we go. That's that. On the other side, I've got the same colors over here. Let's follow through. Put them up here. All right, there we go. So I've got this. This is the front of the cabin here. All right, there. Now, all this down here is sort of a grayish. The real challenge is going to be trying to put in these posts and beams so you can see them. I uh, struggled with this cabin. The wasn't sure I wanted to paint it because it wasn't spectacular and to start with but uh, as I looked at it more and saw that it was really a I thought it was a like a, a ruin type of thing it was like not not really even a, a working cabin but when I saw the googled the name and saw that it was a uh, cabin that's currently in use and has been used by hunters and people that hike this area and go to this lake I thought that's kind of a neat, neat thing to show you guys so it's kind of why I picked on it all right I'm going to see if I can put in some of these uh, posts now comes down to there pick a few darks add some shadow to it all right so the only way you're going to see those is if I give you a slight tone difference value difference between this beam in its background. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm making pretty good progress here, I would say. Some of these beams are actually turned white. Um, which is kind of now that one I should make white and this other one back here I should make redder I'll come back with some white over the top of that but this one here needs to be like this should match this one okay put just a little bit of a a white come down with a more of a grayish I guess this one right here is one I should see make it a little grayer yeah like that 
this one. There we go. Okay. Making progress. Now this one, I'm going to make him kind of some more white in there, make him sort of gray across here. Darker at the bottom. Okay, and I want a bit of a highlight on top, so I'll get my other little brush here and come back and put a little bit of a highlight light to uh, ochre white something to scrape over these clean up some of the uh, white spaces that's out here on the canvas you can't see them but I see them okay that beam here sticks out same way it's kind of sticking out they all stick out this one up at the top is uh, all gray and we have one sticking out here same angle as the one across from it gray here and there's one here across this same angle hard, hard to see that I'm sure let's have a little bit of a well they have a mark on them from where they were cut a circle there. There's another one down here, same way, right on this, right in here. Good way to make that stand out a little bit is to put a little bit of a lighter, lighter circle thing in there. Like right here, let's see if we can put that in. bit of a these over here you can't see the the cut because they're away from you put this down let's put a little bit of a streak down there okay now you're seeing the structure sort of come out of this building here a little bit putting in some lights just enough to give it a bit different look okay there down here I want some other colors intermixed this beam here has got to be a continuation of the one above it <clears throat> I gotta get the same color if I can actually that's not a beam there uh, that's a piece of wood well let's fix that we'll fix that very well right here that beam stops right here at this cross beam. The one at the top stops. There is one right in here. That's oh, that one's in the wrong place. That's about right. I need one here, somewhere like that. This one should be right here, actually. Try to make this as architecturally. <clears throat> accurate as possible if, if possible so let's go back and fix that up a little bit here we don't want that big thing sitting there we want these I don't know if you can tell I did that or not but I'll see if I can 
improve the highlight on it. There. All right, I move that beam over just like that. It's the same thing here. Kind of have him in the wrong place too. Actually, I don't have him in the wrong place as much as I have the upper beam. Need to make him I'll move move the upper beam here so that it looks like he's aligned with that beam below it. <clears throat> All right, so let's stop screwing around. Let's get going. All right, I've got a couple more here that have to go in. Keep using this small brush here. Picking up green, green. Okay. Got a little bit of that. Uh, whoops, way too dark, way too dark. Pick up some light. One thing about using a limited palette, folks, is you. Uh, Makes your choices a lot easier for you. You don't have to spend a whole lot of time <laughs> trying to figure out what colors you're going to use because uh, there aren't that many left. Okay, this is still coming down vertical, vertical. Here they start going horizontal. So I want this to reflect that. All right, there we go. All right, I don't have a lot of light up in there, and I could I could lighten these beams up, and I may do that after a bit. But let's uh, keep going, see if we can get this thing. Uh, we're already over an hour, and we're about two thirds done. So I got to get moving here. So we're we'll putting this base. This is the. Uh, sort of like the porch or whatever, sitting out there. I want to mix it up a little bit, have a few more colors that I use in there. And pick up the green. Okay, that's that. Get this one over here. Another lighter. Picking up that green, which I don't like, but can't do much about it. Once you put it on there, it's on there. Ooh. Come on here folks, let's get this color right. There we go. Well, I hope you all can stay with me. It's going to take me a good another half hour to finish this, I think. It's based on the speed and the number of details and all of that that's going on here. Too, too fat, so I may have to come back and put some more green around it to thin it down. Okay, I got this other beam right here, post, I should call it, I guess a post goes vertical.
So I have made these a little bit lighter as they come forward because they're more in the light. I've got a door back here I've got to put in and a window. This one kind of overlaps that guy on both sides. Goes all the way out there. All right, so let's put in these these dark uh, windows. May get my I haven't used my violet yet. Get that with my midnight black. Let's see, what I can do here with this window. has a interesting shadow this door oh this is kind of fun Okay, we got a cabin door. And we got a window back here that's uh, sort of just a diagonal. Like that. Okay, then around that, let's see, I got some grays. Take that same color, add a little bit of white to it, and just put it in there. So I'm making a window with a little bit of a reflection in it, you see? That's the idea, anyway. Um, over here, this color is uh, it's back to my reds, it's a lighter. Lighter color, maybe with a little bit of yellow in it, or, uh, yeah. See if I can find a color that's close to what's in the original. Um, here, this is a... Okay. Actually, the door jam is what that is. It's set back in. And um, <clears throat> same thing over here. Okay, here we go. All right, so I've got these are all uh, boards across here. I think it's actually these logs that going across here as well. Put the bottom on this window. There we go. Now over here on this side. down a little bit we kind of left that open okay all right um, I got to start got getting into this grass but I wanted to uh, finish off this board there at the bottom one thing I got left here is this little section using a small brush again <clears throat> just put in a light highlighted edge on this door frame all right and then let's make this a little darker on the bottom so you can tell that it's a beam going across there and over here I'm gonna overpaint some of this so that it makes that a smaller, thinner. Connecting post. And while I got that dark color in here, I'm going to put in some of these things that look like the logs, the uh,
same as the uh, over here darker darker okay like that okay I think I'm close to being ready to stop on this part of the cabin just toning up a few things getting rid of a few of these miscellaneous whites floating around here some darks few lighter boards. Let's put in a, a few things that lighten it up here and there. All right, so that's pretty much the cabin, I think. This is wrong value. Tone it down a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> now I got these other trees over here, so I might as well go throw those in and then we'll head to the foreground and we'll get it done. So over here I've got these trees that are gray. Took it right off of the... <laughs> didn't have enough paint in my brush, I don't think, to do it right. So let's go get some more. paint on my hand here. Hold on folks, I gotta clean myself up or I'm gonna have paint everywhere. <clears throat> I get focused on painting and I forget what I'm what's going on with my left hand. Sometimes I have to come back and Okay, this is wider than what's on the photograph, but it's close to what's on the other side of the painting. Okay, now similarly take the same color, white, violet, and black, with a narrower brush. I'm going to come over here and kind of put this guy in, if I can. Okay, so I want uh, some really dark stuff out here on the outside to make that stand out. This will probably be framed. I'll probably frame right over that. You probably can't even see that once I, once I put a frame on it. But uh, I want it to at least for you guys to uh, get rid of that white canvas. And similarly here, I want to close this guy in a little bit, make sure I've got um, Yeah, there were some more, more parts of this uh, tree over here that were available for Just abstract 
shapes as much as you can make them. I kind of like those abstract shapes better than the ones I got over here. I'm doing this with a flat brush. Over here I got a lot of little spindly stuff. I'm going to hook that together and just make it kind of connect there to that tree. In here I'll put a few more lights. All right, I think I'm going to stop on that for now and get moving on to the next section, which primarily is this uh, <clears throat> uh, foreground. And uh, might make it go fairly quickly, maybe. I don't know. Let's see, put in some some dark. Put in a few dark. Oh, we got this area underneath the uh, under here. This is um, dark. There's some interesting abstract shapes in there. So we'll throw some of those in. Pick up some of my blacks and my violets. And just put in a few things here that are going to kind of connect this dark. <clears throat> together with this dark over here. At least visually, we want to connect it if we can. There. This particular beam here comes down further. Actually goes right down into the ground there. That's where it goes. Like that. I'll just darken him up a little bit, give it a, a bit of a... Okay, then all of this other stuff here is going to be... Throw some darks in here, we're going to come back and put some uh, grasses over the top of that. Probably use our... <clears throat> probably use our old stippling big brush. And uh, I was going to put some white This um, stairway comes down here like this, like this, like that. Then we got a, another side on him over here, like this. And let's see what we can do now with our big brush. I'm going to see if I can get some picking up white, liquid white, this yellow ochre mix that I've got here. Um, put this in as a layer underneath everything. Liquid white, liquid white. and white. See, I punch that up into that dark color like that, and then when I come down, I got the dark in the brush, and then I can use that to uh, <clears throat> make some more texture there. So it's just looking like a field of grasses that have this so when I hit that, I pick up that dark and comes back. Now I'll come back and put some green over the top of that, <clears throat> and just about have this job done here. This soft foreground. Some hair 
feathers in there from this brush. Come on. Okay. <clears throat> That's that. Now let's see if we can pick up some other colors now and sort of okay, okay. To some white. Pick up some of these darker colors and flick in some use that brush to uh, flick up some uh, grasses in some areas. <clears throat> I'm going to make this a little darker here because I want to try to show you there's a path coming in here. And it's a little bit lighter than some of the other areas. So we'll just kind of throw that in. Let's see how we're doing. Okay. I um, think I need to just touch up a little bit the uh, <clears throat> in this uh, these stairs here <clears throat> steps. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on inside here. Which. So oh, there's some like that, throw in a few of these, and then come back with this big brush and sort of <coughs> give that a something like that. All right, um, <clears throat> we'll step back and take a look at this and see if it, how it compares with some of the values I have. I think that <clears throat> roof needs just a little more darkness uh, in this area where I have that shadow. It's, it looks darker to me than uh, what it is on the uh, painting. So I'm going to see if I can just Touching a few more things that look like we got some, I don't know if they're tree shadows or places where the, the uh, maybe tree shadows or it may just be places where this roofing is uh, stained or I don't know. It just sort of stands out too much. I don't want it to be so bright. <clears throat> Okay, um, here is, touch that up a little bit, put a few more, let's put a couple of things back here, it looks like there may be something in this door so that it's not like one big block back there, something might be showing through, all right, um, just a few touches of some darks up here in this guy to make him sort of look like he's got some rough texture like this one on the left and over here the same way I think I'm going to call it quits a few spots here and there All right, I could play around with that for a little bit more. Probably could make the some of these.
post a little lighter in some areas. Highlights aren't quite showing up the way I liked. Um, like that, maybe just a little lighter. There, that's brightening those up just a little to make them more obvious. Across here, put a few, make that a little more obvious. Make this a little darker, make it a little more obvious because it's blending in with the back that's behind it. So I'm just finishing some of the shadowing and that sort of stuff. Um, I think I'll quit. I think I'll quit. <clears throat> All right, tell me to stop somebody. It's my problem. I used to, when I taught classes, I'd have somebody responsible to yell at me when it was time to quit. So somebody would be telling me to stop by it now. Just a few things. These little jobs just sort of help finish it off. Okay. All right, stop. I am stopping. Get myself a little bit of this... Uh, some color to put my name on there with and I'll call it quits for you. Been an hour and a half, so I think it's a, been a fun painting to try to do. Um, fairly complicated, more complicated than I thought, but uh, get some more dark in there, darker. Somebody signed their name the other day, and they took a swipe of the palette on every every letter. It took them forever. Of course, that's maybe what you think I do. It take forever here. Okay, got it on there. I think we've finished it pretty nicely. <laughs> stop before I do something I regret. Yeah, that's when I start putting my name on it. That's when I stop. <clears throat> so. Okay, it's been fun. I uh, hope you like this. Hope you give it a try and let me know how you do on it. Um, the sketches are down below. Um, there's actually a link to the blog that uh, Jeremy Markle uh, put out there describing their hiking trip up to this cabin back in, uh, I think it was 2015. So it's kind of an interesting read. So I'm uh, uh, connected with him on uh, through email and so uh, hopefully he's going to send me some more photos and I'll be able to uh, try some more of these uh, crazy things from uh, uh, that part of Canada. <clears throat> I think that's all I want to say. Uh, check out my Facebook page. Check, check out my website. Uh, subscribe if you're not a subscriber, please. And uh, send this on to your friends if you like what I do and would like them to uh, take a look at it. I'd like to uh, get a few more subscribers. Um, I do have a Patreon uh, site. If you want to support me, you can uh, give me a little, buy me a cup of coffee or something on Patreon. I don't put anything special out on Patreon. Uh, but um, if you would like to do that, I'd like to have a few cents here and there, um, but uh, no big deal. I do this because I love it, and uh, I'm not trying to make money off of it for sure. So uh, anyway, uh, until I see you again, uh, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Bye-bye. <laughs>